Good morning. Hey, looking forward to uh, getting into the Word this morning and wrapping up uh, what's been a four-part series on renewing the mind. Uh, so uh, I'm, I think my, my job uh, as I've uh, sought the Lord in this is kind of tying the neat little bow uh, on everything that we've spoken about. Uh, you you might have been here for the messages, might have missed some, so just to kind of pull us to where we are now, uh, Pastor Ralph began us uh, with an introduction to the renewed mind, talking about what does the Word of God say, uh, a little bit about uh, j just giving us context on why it's important for us to be looking at this and talking about this. Uh, then we moved the next week to Pastor Nate, and he spoke about identity and how important identity is, uh, our identity in Christ, and how that relates to the renewed mind. And then uh, 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 Patty made mention this morning, a tremendous message last week that Pastor James shared uh, just the content and the anointing on uh, mental health, how important that was to look at it, and then uh, just the great things that God did uh, during the altar times. Uh, so, so this week with us wrapping it up, my goal is to take a, I, I want to look at it from our discipleship perspective. In other words, living in the renewed mind as a disciple of Christ, as a follower of Christ, day in and day out, week in and week out, where am I going? Month in and month out, get ready, year in and year out. Amen. So I want to want to uh, pull out of the uh, abstract how we can, in a very practical way, uh, walk out the renewed mind. And that's why we're going to be talking specifically about guarding our mind. Uh, how do we, in the daily uh, of all that is life, how do we daily uh, guard our minds? So, so with that, let's begin just by uh, re really probably for most of us a review. Um, by the way, really interesting, you know, uh, Karen Gimple here uh, on the front row, she uh, did a part two of three on Vessels of Blessing uh, on Wednesday nights. And it really caught my attention what God was putting on her heart thematically this last Wednesday. If you were here, chances are you're going to hear uh, me dovetailing in some things uh, that the Lord put on my heart as I was preparing for this message. And, and I only tell you that just because whenever I, I see the Lord uh, do any kind of a repetition of something, it massively catches my attention. <laughs> Can you say amen, right? The, the Lord, the Lord will, will sometimes do. So uh, again, this is I'm moving toward the practical side. In it, I'm inviting you uh, to take some inventory this morning, to begin the process of just inviting Holy Spirit to speak to you regarding the practice of these things uh, that, that we're going to get into here. So with that, let's start with why do we need to guard our minds in the first place? Uh, if you've been baptized at the Church of Grace and Peace, uh, we, we ask, have you received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and, your, and Savior? And the person, the candidate will say, yes, I have, or y yes. Uh, and then we'll say, and do, do you renounce sin, the devil, and the world system? And the person will say, yes, I renounce that. And then according to the profession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit into the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So in that, that little exchange during water baptism, uh, we are acknowledging a threefold battle that we as believers have renounced, but it's a warfare that we wage every day. Now, now, I need you to hear me with both ears now. We, not, we do not battle for victory. Amen. We battle from the victory of the cross. Amen. Amen? Amen? That is so huge to understand that context of when we fight the good fight and this idea of being at war and being in a battle. But although we fight from a place of victory, Jesus has already overcome on the cross. We know that there is still a daily engagement where we have to enforce that victory. 
And the word of God tells us about our adversary that uh, if he can, he will try to rob, kill, and destroy. And so we have to not be ignorant of his devices. We have to say no to that. And that brings us to, so we want to live in a place where we guard our minds. So let me just briefly run through. So this threefold battle uh, that, that we are engaged in, uh, again, the first is sin. And let's look at Romans 6, 11 to 14. It says, in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Notice here in verse 12, therefore, do not let, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves. So there's don't do and there's do, right? From this place of enforcing the victory of the cross in our lives as believers, as born again uh, disciples of Christ. So rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. Hey, we were doing that during worship today, right? Let all of, I freely give all that I am to you because of what you've done on the cross, Lord. Uh, and verse 14, for sin shall no longer be your master. I, I love it in another translation. It says sin no longer has dominion over you. We've been freed from the dominion of sin. Let's look at 1 John uh, 1 and then verses 7 to 9. It says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Verse 9, but if we confess our sins... He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So there's this opportunity for sin all around us and we have forsaken that we renounce that we say yes to the lordship of christ it's our it's our 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 grow our our growth process spiritually to uh be extravagantly obedient to his call and to his commands but we're going to miss it from time to time and when we miss it whether it's by something we committed whether it's by something we omitted by not doing, whether we're fully aware or we look back and say, hey, that was sin. I shouldn't have done that. You know, sometimes in in the moment we not realize, wherever it is, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to not only forgive us, but to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we need a guard because there's this battle against sin. And then number two, the devil, Ephesians 6.10 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So I had somebody uh, asking me for some clarity at the end of first service, just kind of, so how does this all work? We're, We're victorious, we overcome, we're believers, but, you know, this is saying there's this battle against these powers that rule this dark world. Isn't the world God's? And the answer is, yes, he created it. It all belongs to him. But he gave governance to humanity back in the garden, and we forfeited it over to the devil in in the fall uh, in the garden. Can you say amen? Back, Back in Genesis, Jesus won that back for us. And that's why we are to be, uh, Lord, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So there's these two kingdoms, the kingdom of darkness. It is a defeated kingdom, but it is a kingdom that has sway over this whole world. And when we get to Revelation, that's going to intensify more and more until the Lord splits the sky and comes down to earth and says, enough. What are we supposed to be doing in the meantime there? We are to be plundering hell and populating heaven, right? That's the picture, but there's a battle, you know? It doesn't go uncontested. There's, and and, and we have to be so careful. I would say, especially in the age that we're in, and church family, can I say, especially here this year, uh, we have to be careful that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. 
but that we, we, we do our warfare enforcing the victory of the cross against these spiritual forces in the heavenly realms. So that's the second level of warfare. The third is this world system. And it ties in, I've already uh, spoken to it a little bit, but we live in a world that has a system uh, that, that, that's fallen, that's demonic. Uh, so we need to make sure that we are not the frog in the kettle where we are just living and saturated in a culture, in a world that isn't looking to choose Christ, isn't looking to know God, isn't looking to do it his way. And we have to instead resist that, know God and be his light uh, and and in enforcing that, that's a battle. And as we look at that, it all starts with it's a battle for us to walk that out, right? It's, you know, where we say, um, you, you know, uh, Lord, do a work in this world and start with me, right? That's always where it starts. Lord, start working in me. So key to that, as we talk about the renewed mind, is going to be that we have a guard in our mind. By the way, just a, the, the verse that I wanted to look at regarding this world system 1 John 5, 19, we know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one, right? So it spells that out for us. So with that now, understanding, okay, we need to guard our mind because there's, there's this threefold battle that we have to fight the good fight from a position of victory, not for victory. Let's look at four key aspects of guarding the mind. And this is what I was leaning into in my introduction um, you might even want to, if you're not normally a, a note person, jot some notes down and keep this in your Bible. And this would be uh, something great for us to kind of uh, reflect on and, and let the Lord do some inventory in our lives, uh, you know, over these next several weeks. So four key aspects to guarding the mind. Number one, guard the gates. To guard our mind, we have to guard the gates. And if we look at Proverbs 4.23, it says, above all else, Guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. So the heart is the spirit man, right? We are a spirit. We have a soul. Pastor James was getting into this mind, intellect, emotions. I think, Karen, you were hitting on it too, right? Um, and then we live in a body, you know, so it's all, you know, meshed together. But for us to understand how, how God has you, uh, designed us, uh, a triune God has um, created a, tri, uh, a triparted person, we could say. We are a spirit. That's the eternal part of us. We have a soul and we live in a body. So the soul, mind, will, and emotions, the, the, the soul is the gate to the heart. And there are gates. So, so if our soul is our mind, there's gates to our mind. So everybody tracking with me so far? If the mind falls, then the next place where th that, that uh, attack is coming is into, into the spirit realm, right? So here it is. Your eyes and your ears are the gates to your mind. So think of your eyes as a gate. I know Pastor Walt uh, really, really nurtured this into the church family to get this. Uh, our ears are gates to the mind. And uh, Job, in Job 31.1, he made a decision regarding his eye gate. He said, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a young woman. You know, that's, that's a picture of being very intentional. I'm not just going to try. I've made a covenant with my eyes with the gates of my eyes that will lead into my thought life and my imaginations. And I'm saying there's a covenant there that I will not look lustfully where I should be, you know, uh, in any way. And I won't be looking where I shouldn't be looking. Uh, then with the ears, Proverbs 2.2, 2, so that you incline your ear to wisdom, it says, incline your ear and apply your heart to understanding. It was kind of cute, uh, just uh, this last week I was at Walmart with my mom, and she just kind of stopped. And I was like, I wonder what mom's doing, you know? And she's just pausing, and there's all kinds of chatter going around, and then she leaned over to me. There, there was a little argument going over on the side, and she said to me, I was listening, I was eavesdropping in on that conversation. <laughs> I said, honesty is awesome, you know? And, uh, you know, and she said, and then I said, why do I care? You know, and I, I said, boy, is that not a picture? Don't we do that? We incline our ear. You know, we could be in a crowd and we start to hear a couple of voices. That might be juicy. And we kind of lean in and we incline our ear. 
Well, our ear is a gate to our mind, which is the filter that leads to our eternal spirit man that's on the inside. That part of us that's born again unto God, right? So we need to understand, okay, so if my eyes are gates um, and my ears, one more thing regarding ears, 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they'll gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. So literally at the point where it's, it's bending the ear, not toward truth, not with a discernment and a guardship over that gate, but instead letting, um, letting self Letting the flesh control uh, what the ear gate allows in and out. Can you say amen? amen. And, and it goes on in verse, four, and it, in verse 4, it says, They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. So, so with this idea, we have eye gates and we have ear gates. Here's a really sobering thought for all of us this morning. There is very little that enters our gates that is neutral. Right? When we come down to it, there's very little that either doesn't pull us toward the Lord or pull us away from the Lord. So that's why we're talking about, one of the reasons we're talking about, let's guard our minds. If we're going to walk in the renewed mind, we've been given the mind of Christ. And if we're going to walk in the renewed mind, it is a discipleship effort. It is a consistent day in, day out, week in, week, week out, month in, month out effort. So now I want to move us uh, together uh, to begin to ask the Lord, okay, so what am I putting in front of my eye gates and my ear gates? What, what am I doing intentionally? What am I doing unintentionally? What's in my blind spot that I can't see, but maybe as I take time to evaluate and look at it, man, I have to call it what it is. It's something unhealthy for me. And so I want us to look at this at the context of not from a, listen, not from a pharisaical standpoint, like a, like a rules and regulations standpoint is what I mean, but instead in asking Holy Spirit, is this healthy for me? Because what's going to come into the eyes and the ears is, is going to be fodder. It's going to be seed for the, the ground of our thought life. And then those seeds can come up and they can take root. And we know little seeds can become little weeds that become big weeds that become trees, right? I've heard also this way, sow a thought, reap an action, sow an action, uh, reap a habit, sow a habit, reap a behavior. Might have them backward, I'm not sure, but you get the idea. Sow a behavior, reap a destiny, right? So guarding our gates because through the gates are the place where our meditations, our uh, ponderings, you know, our fixating of our thoughts. That's where all that takes place. So when we realize there's very little uh, that's neutral, we need to remember that songs, music, TV, movies, social media, poetry, art, conversations with one another, all these things convey thoughts ideas, philosophies, views of the world. And they can either build up our walk with Christ and the victory we have in him, or they can erode that, battle against it, start to pull down and tear down. That's why it's so healthy for us on a regular basis to, to be evaluating. Uh, I, I didn't give this to the awesome folks in the booth, but here's another great scripture to jot down if you're taking notes. Colossians 2.8 says, be sure that no one leads you away with false and empty teaching that is only human, which comes from the ruling spirits of this world. And of course, we know, looking back at Ephesians, those are those spiritual forces of wickedness and heavenly, pla heavenly places, right? These things don't come from Christ. So this leads us to the next uh, key here. So if we have eye gates and ear gates that we're supposed to be looking at uh, and guarding, then we have to look at, okay, so what's come through the gates and what are we spending our time thinking about? What are we allowing ourselves to focus on, yeah. right? So uh, some questions. So, so number two is inspect and evaluate your thought life. Yeah. 
See, we're starting to meddle in the arena that is the choice battleground for the enemy. Is our thought life. Come on, can you say amen? I love that. Yeah, I'm praying in this that he's exposed all around the room, watching online. You know, we're all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute. I've been entertaining that. That's not from heaven. Out it goes in Jesus' name. And here, here's some things that we can ask just to even, you know, and when I talked about not only our thought life, but the media that we put before our eyes and, you know, see, here's the thing. Because there's ideas in our movies and in what, what we read and social media and so forth, we got to realize that if, if we're not highly, highly intentional, what we marinate in, we're going to start to become like, right? It, all, it starts to normalize what God says shouldn't be normal, you know? It starts to say it, it's okay what God says is not okay. So it's so healthy for us to go back. And, and here's, you have them in your notes, just a couple of thoughts to, to reflect on. So, hey, whatever area you want to look at, uh, does this have a positive effect in my life? You know, because again, I don't think that a conversation like this today is one that you can do from a Pharisee mindset. You know, like for instance, you know, four different people could talk about a particular TV program, you know, uh, and for five different reasons, there could be why this is not pulling me from God versus somebody else saying, hey, you know, honestly, that does pull me from God. You know, now there are some things that are very clear in black and white. Don't misunderstand that statement. But what I'm saying is we can't legislate holiness, Holiness is I'm set apart from something and I'm set apart to something, right? So we, the, the, way we, the way we work that out in our lives is we have to look at, okay, so all the inputs to my gates, are they drawing me closer to God or are they pulling me away? So uh, does it have a positive effect in my life? Does it enhance my testimony to a non-believer? Does it make me a stronger Christian? Will it exalt the Lord? And I think number five, this is a great one. Does it set the right pattern for my Christian friends and family? So I'm talking about media inputs and things like that, but let me talk for a moment just about conversation. Hey, let me really meddle. I think that's my spiritual gift. How about two believers chatting in the lobby after service and asking ourselves, that conversation I just had, did that have a positive effect in my life? Did it enhance my testimony to a non-believer? Can I tell you, a little while back, um, six months to a year ago, there, there were folks, they weren't unbelievers, but they had a first-time visit to the church, and we knocked it out of the park. They were like, this is so loving. What a great church. We felt so welcomed. It was so great. They came back the next week, and our pastors got a phone call. It, it shipwrecked them because there was a conversation in the lobby that was so ungodly that they unfortunately overheard that they were like, wait a minute, I just had like night and day difference in experiences from one week to the next, right? So how healthy for us to look at this and say, Gee, even in the conversation I'm having with somebody, does it set the right pattern for the people that I do life with? Come on, can you say amen? amen. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching real good. That's what <laughs> Brother Hagen used to say. All right, amen. And, and again, what am I speaking to? I'm not speaking to legislating things. I'm talking about health and life. And I'm talking about, man, my life is, is it, we're talking about living an inspired life. Man, I'm better because I'm around this person. I'm more encouraged when I'm around this person. Even if it's, man, they tell me like it is, sometimes it smacks me between the eyes, but it's all love and I'm growing. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, right? You know, it, amen. Praise God. Praise God. So does it exalt the Lord? Does it make me stronger? These are all great questions. And then what do we do with all this on the other side? Well, 2 Corinthians 10.5, God gives us such a great guideline. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. And then we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. You, you know, that's where you tell your mind, mind, thoughts, I am Lord, bow to me as I bow to Jesus. Right? Right? You will not drive me, I drive you. 
thought life, mind, you know, when those carnal things come in, know in the name of Jesus that that is standing against the knowledge of God in my life. I say no to you. And it becomes prayer. It can become worship. Amen. All right, and then that moves on to number three. Then as we do that, as we do that regularly, three, train your thinking for godliness. So thank God we can train our thinking. We can train our mind. We can train what we allow in, what we don't, what we focus on, what we don't. Now, I want to say that just a very careful balancing statement, especially in light of uh, fantastic last week, Pastor James, talking about mental health. There are, there are times and there's, there, there's degree of assault, there's trauma, there's stuff that people go through where counseling and intervention and medication and other things are, are a part of the healing journey. So don't hear me contradicting that. What I'm talking about is day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, living our lives with this practice where we are trained to, to, to be intentional with what our mind is doing. Amen? So uh, 1 Timothy 4.8 says uh, in the Amplified, for physical training is of some value, but godliness, that is spiritual training, is of value in everything and in every way, since it holds promise for the present life and for the life to come. So I, I want to kind of paint this picture out a little bit. I hope everybody's tracking with me. I, I'm talking about holiness, clean hands, and a pure heart. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord, right? Getting the junk out so God's glory can abide among us, right? You know, uh, so, so that, that, that is what do we allow in the gates that's, that, that would pollute our minds. But I'm also talking from the perspective of living in victory with God. It goes back to the garden. Did God really say? So we attack those thoughts and say, yeah, he did. Shut up, devil. I'm trusting God, you know, in whatever way, bringing that thought into captivity. But then I'm also talking about he is the accuser of the brethren. So he will look to bring strife and discord. So if we want to have long haul, healthy relationships, it's going to require us bringing our thoughts into obedience to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Come on, how many, how many would say, yes, that's true, right? You know, so we start to recognize you know, one of the silent killers of any relationship, whether you're talking uh, marriage, business, friendship, uh, wh whatever, is resentment. And the good news is the Lord will show us if it starts to get in. And we say, no, that, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So I, I renounce that in Jesus' name. Lord, help me. Lord, work in me. Right? And, and, and he does. So I'm trying to paint out whatever area of life we're looking at, it, it's affected by our thoughts and how we respond and live and react. It's all um, uh, affected on how much we're allowing the Lord to sanctify and renew and heal and work in our thoughts. And, and how much we're, whether we realize it or not, are allowing the enemy or the voice of confusion to come in against us. So, amen. All right, now the last point here uh, just simply says know and use your resources in this training yourself for godliness, you know, for, for how we're thinking. So, know and use your resources. So, this is not exhaustive, but certainly this, this is a good start. Holy Spirit, the voice of Holy Spirit. I can't tell you how many times I've grumbled in my heart against you name it. And Holy Spirit said, you're wrong. Repent. Forgive. Yeah, but Lord, they did that. Yes, they did. You're wrong. Repent. Forgive. Thank God for Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. The armor of God. And, and, and when we look at the armor, it's a, it's a great study. We see it in Ephesians chapter 6. It's all in some way related back to the Word of God, feeding on the Word of God, living in the Word of God. Um, and then prayer, knowing our authority in Christ, the authority of the name of Jesus, uh, the blood of Jesus, the, uh, the power of the blood, our mouth, using our mouth when we confess the word, when we declare in agreement with what God says, that's powerful. That's literally, that, that has creative power. I, just in case you tuned out, how many, how many just heard, heard that? When we speak the word of God out of our mouth in faith, it's got creative power. You know, so that, that is a huge part of our resources when we're, when we're uh, guarding our mind. Uh, our church family, 
We want it to be that our church family are those that build us up. Accountability, bringing ourselves into accountability. And then this last one, I just think is so important, is uh, practicing reflection. You know, which is why I am such a, like, foaming at the mouth, rabid fan of the concept of quiet times. You know, it doesn't say in scripture anywhere, thou shalt have a quiet time. You know, but there are things it does say in scripture in our modern, crazy, everything bombarding you all day long world to steal away and have some undistracted, uninterrupted time to be with the Lord in prayer and worship, uh, in word time, to meditate on the word and to reflect and to bring our lives before him. It's essential. And God will do so much in dealing with what happens up here when we practice that private reflection time and then bring it into accountability as well. You know, sometimes, you know, the the enemy, actually, I feel like this is a word for, this was not intended, but sometimes we're fighting this by ourselves. And the minute you bring somebody into that battle with accountability, it just completely disarms it. So maybe there's somebody here today and you're like, man, I'm fighting and I feel like I'm losing. You know, Jim, you said I'm fighting from a place of victory. It doesn't feel that way. Might be time to invite somebody in through an accountability partner where you can share and you can confide and stand in the word together. uh, And that'll disarm. The enemy loves darkness. The enemy loves secrecy. And the enemy loves to isolate. You know, so we break them away from that, and, uh, and then we're, we're all hooked up with what God wants to do. So, amen. All right. Hey, we are wrapped up with that. Would you stand with me if you can as we close? And I, I just want us to have a little bit of time of prayer uh, just, just, to, just to respond to some of these thoughts that we looked at this morning. And what's so great is, you know, this is a message for whoever in the Lord, whether you've been at it for decades or whether you're a new believer today and, you know, some of these concepts of, you know, spiritual warfare and spirit, soul, body and all that are, are kind of new. You know, in my own reading right now, I'm in Judges. You know, so I've been looking at God calling apart the Israelites, you know, uh, out of slavery, uh, going through the, the wilderness and then the wanderings and then Joshua with the, the taking of the promised land. You know, and there is a picture of, it, it, it shows, it holds a mirror up to us, doesn't it? You know, that's what I love about the Word of God. And if there's one thing I see, being in the Lord for a bunch of years now, being in the Lord for a bunch of years does not guarantee my maturity. It doesn't guarantee that today I'm walking in victory. Got to keep walking it out, right? Got to keep living it. And it's amazing, you, you, know, um, you know, you could go back to... Uh, Miriam and Aaron attacking Moses, you know, you're not the only guy, uh, Korah in the rebellion, you're not the only guy who's got the anointing, you know, and it's, it's amazing. We can, we can walk with God, and then if we don't continue to keep our minds submitted to him in this threefold battle, we can get off track, you know, which is why I go back to, man, I tell you what, in the word, in quiet time, in fellowship, that's all safety mechanism for us, right? To keep us from, from going AWOL spiritually as well as physically disappearing out the back door. Come on, can you say amen? I mean, the Lord, the Lord said, you know, uh, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. There is such depth of importance in that statement that the Lord instructs us, right? Amen. So why don't we just, can we just all around the room, let's just make this whole room you don't even have to step out of your chair for, to come to the altar. Let's just say you're, you're, me together, we're making an altar right where we're, we're at before the Lord. Just to say, Lord, I bring myself before you. So let, let's just, just pray for a couple of minutes and then, and then we'll be done. So Lord, as we wrap up this series here, we're, we're, we're so thankful that you've given us the mind of Christ. We're so thankful, Holy Spirit, that you dwell and abide inside us. And that it's your heart's desire to lead us in in agreement and confirmation with the word. And then beautifully in all of the different moments of our day to day. God, I thank you that your, your goal for us is for us to look more and more like Jesus. 
for us to be the head and not the tail, for us to have testimony of victory, to go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And we recognize, Lord, in the generation that we're in today, both by the volume of stuff that comes at us and by the fact that this culture has so moved away from you. Lord, we recognize we need to guard our minds. So just afresh and new this morning, we say by the power of your spirit that we will purpose to do that. And we invite you now, Lord, to help us. Lord, any place where we're self-sabotaging, by what's coming through the eye and ear gate. Whether it's by the means of entertainment, whether it's by the means of conversation, whether it's by the means of the environments that we choose to put ourselves in. Lord, any place where we have become party to sabotaging ourselves because what's coming through the gates exalts itself, exalts itself against the knowledge of you. Lord, we just say we repent for that in the name of Jesus. Lord, it could be there's things right now that all around the room we're saying, Lord, I recognize that. That's not good. I repent. Maybe, Lord, for some of us, there's stuff in the blind spot. We don't realize that's bringing harm. So help us with that. Help us evaluate our thoughts. Help us to live in a way where we begin to practice fighting that good fight of faith, pulling out the weeds, putting up the guard, of taking captive the thoughts that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. And Lord, the resources that are all around us, Lord, may we utilize them, may we consistently just over these next weeks in greater and greater ways may we consistently utilize these great resources the armor of God the blood of Jesus the authority of of the name of Jesus listening more intently for Holy Spirit's voice and then finally Lord we just pray Lord regarding the area we looked at today on how we can impact those around us. Lord, forgive us where we've been the sabotage to somebody else. And what we said, what we didn't speak up. Where we allowed our our thoughts to focus. What we allowed to be okay that was harmful to somebody else. Lord, please forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we know just like in the natural, we feed on junk food, we can, as we cast off the junk food, there can be cravings. We can get crabby. Lord, any place where we have been allowing mental, emotional, spiritual junk food through the eye and the ear gate, by your grace, we say no to it in the name of Jesus. And help us to crave and hunger and thirst for what's righteousness, what's of your nature and character, of what is the kingdom of God. So thank you, Lord just going to slowly just just give us a half a minute here just in whatever way you're individually responding to the lord thank you lord even as we leave today lord if we're being thick forgive us <laughs> show us make it clear where we've justified, yeah, but thank you. It's your love. Your love leads us to repentance. 
So God, I thank you in this that it's from a position of victory that we are to guard our minds. Lord, I pray as we dismiss this service, as we wrap up now, uh, Lord, in these days, to, days ahead, let the testimony of just great victory, great growth, great breakthrough, let that testimony continue to come. You'll get all the glory for it, God. It's all in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen.